steering. Uh, but it's not like that at all. Uh, dropping off body and mind means that, as I started saying before, we usually think of mind as one thing and body as another thing. And this is not something that's new. Uh, this is something that's been going back uh, thousands of years, and people even in Buddhist time uh, thought of body and mind as being two different things. Um, one of the one of the great phrases. Uh, uh, that appears on the back of Santana albums is uh, I am not this body, I am the spirit soul that flies within. When Santana went uh, went uh, went for some, I think it was Sri Chimnoy, some Hindu philosophy, he started putting that on the back of all his albums. I'm not a big Santana fan, but it was always funny to see this this little phrase on the back of the album. I am not the, I am not this body, I am the spirit soul that flies within. And this is a common sort of philosophy that existed um, even in Buddhist time, this idea that, that, um, that our true self is not the body, our true self is, is some kind of a spiritual being that lives in the body and that uh, passes out of the body. And of course, uh, Christianity has this idea as well. Um, but uh, Buddha himself uh, dug into this idea and observed it and found it lacking. Um, in, in the philosophy that uh, Gautama Buddha developed, um, there is no soul. Um, body and mind are one and the same. Um, you can't, you can't uh, make this uh, differentiation, uh, this clear cut slice it right down one side and here we have body and here we have mind. In, in his practice, in his uh, observ observation of his own body and mind, um, he couldn't find this difference. He couldn't find this separation. He couldn't find a, a line where you could draw uh, and cut one thing from the other. They were always uh, intertwined. And to say um, body and mind are the same thing is um, it's a pretty big thing. Um, and it's a pretty big fundamental difference uh, between Buddhism and just about any other religion, uh, certainly. Um, there may be things within the realm of philosophy that uh, they get into that idea. But as far as religions go, they're almost all based <coughs> on this idea that um, mind and body are two different things and not the same. Um, so dropping off body and mind means dropping off the idea that there is body and that there is mind. Um, when you're actually doing the practice of zazen, uh, there is no body and there is no mind in the sense that um, there isn't uh, a distinction. You're doing a practice um, in action. And even though it doesn't seem like action because you're not actually doing anything in the normal sense of doing something, you're not throwing a ball to anybody or, uh, or uh, burning down the houses of parliament or, you know, I don't know, whatever, some kind of action. We usually think of an action. Um, you are, you are, um, it is actually a practice which is action. And the action is, how the hell do I get through this <laughs> until the bell rings. Um, the action is, is the sitting itself. And there is a certain amount of movement involved. I mean, there's, there's um, nobody who can go through an entire period of zazen without moving at all because you, you constantly have to adjust and, and keep everything right. So um, even though the action or the movement is very small, there is a certain amount of movement. But um, the, the goal, if you can say there's a goal, is uh, to minimize any kind of movement, to try to stay as still as possible. Um, and that's a kind of action. So this dropping away body and mind is, um, is the practice, uh, is what you're doing in the practice. There isn't body and there isn't mind. Um, as you kind of go deeper into the practice, this becomes more apparent. Uh, and the fourth 
uh, criteria or thing he talks about is uh, shikantaza. And shikantaza is um, probably what is, um, separates uh, Soto style uh, zazen from the, the other styles is this specific emphasis on shikantaza practice. And shikantaza means just sitting. Um, and another, another way Nishijima Sensei sometimes uh, translates this is becoming one piece. Uh, so everything just comes together uh, within this idea of just sitting. Uh, and just sitting is, um, is an interesting way to uh, translate uh, Shikantaza because the, what's translated as just isn't really, um, in English we have a just that means like, uh, what are you doing? I'm just going out, mom. You know, uh, so just is like uh, something that uh, signifies uh, something that's not terribly important. Um, but uh, the just that we're talking about here is meaning doing nothing but that thing. So uh, there's nothing extra, you're just sitting. You're not sitting with a goal in mind, you're not sitting trying to get enlightenment, you're not sitting trying to uh, become Buddha, um, you're just sitting. Uh, and this is a difficult thing. Um, I often run into people um, who come to my other lectures in, in Los Angeles who, uh, who've been taught that, uh, that Shikantaza is something that's too difficult for beginners and uh, we should do other things uh, in order to prepare ourselves for Shikantaza, um, other types of practice. But um, if you go into a more standard uh, Soto sort of uh, Zazen practice, this is what you start out with, and this is what you end up with, and there's nothing else. Uh, you're, you're just sitting. Um, which is real barren and real dry, um, but when you get down to it, um, I don't know why you need anything preliminary to that, uh, to be honest. Um, when you're sitting, you're just sitting. And anything else you're doing um, to try to gain anything from that sitting is a kind of distraction. There is no, there's nothing um, to gain, and there's no one to gain it. Um, and that's just the reality of the situation. We think that there are things to gain, and we think that, uh, uh, that there are uh, plateaus to be reached or, or goals to be set and accomplished. Uh, but the goals we set and the, and the things we try to accomplish are always somewhere else. They're always over there in the future. Um, and they're always based on some kind of imagination. Um, we imagine what enlightenment must be like and we make our effort to, uh, to try to get that. Um, and if you make effort in a certain direction, um, you may end up experiencing something like you imagined you wanted to experience, but that kind of experience isn't terribly valuable. Um, it doesn't matter uh, whether your zazen is good or bad, um, meaning we often feel, or I often feel, when I'm doing my practice and my whole history of practice has been a, a feeling of really tremendous frustration most of the time, um, thinking that this is, this is lousy, this is the lousiest zazen that anybody has ever done. Uh, because it's not, I'm not uh, clear, I'm not dropping away body and mind, I'm not becoming enlightened, I'm just miserable. Um, but that kind of zazen may be uh, the most valuable um, kind, because it's real. Um, when you feel your zazen is successful, uh, most of the time it's because it's um, in line with whatever you fantasized it ought to be, um, which isn't so valuable. Um, when you're just sitting, uh, you're facing the reality of that moment.